So sitting here at the beginning and listening to Lisa, I, this is just fascinating because her speech was really about who I am. And, uh, you know, to be in a room when she, uh, one of the other speakers too, had people hold up their hands. Uh, how many people were entrepreneurs and starting a company? And I think an incredible percentage of people raised their hands. And uh, so in a lot of respects, um, I'll, I'll take a minute through each of the different points and talk a little bit about how you can harness what I'm saying too. But, uh, you know, when Lisa was talking, you know, that was me. Um, you know, I, I was the kid that knocked on your door one day when I was nine years old because I wanted to wash your car. And then the next day I was knocking on your door again uh, because I wanted to mow your lawn. And then the next day I was knocking because I wanted to paint your numbers on your curb. And, you know, I was, and the only thing re respectfully at the beginning for me, it was a little bit about the money. Um, but once you get to a certain point, then it becomes more about fulfillment. Uh, and it, it's, uh, it, it's great. Um, I think I owned my first business when I was 15 years old. It was a delivery wholesale business. I had a couple of vans and I had to hire people that were 16 that can drive me around town and make my deliveries. Um, then I started a sportswear business, had my real estate license for a cup of coffee. Uh, then I opened up a restaurant and another one. I built it up to a little chain of restaurants. And then I became fascinated in the communications industry. And uh, I think it was the first time in a long time that I didn't think about business ownership. I thought about communications because it was so fascinating. And I quietly wanted to own a phone company. Uh, but I didn't tell anybody that because uh, it's a little bit bold, you know, when you get a job and I got a job in a phone company hooking up wires and laying fiber optic cables around Anaheim. And uh, I didn't want to tell anybody that was my dream to own a phone company, but it was. And I used to uh, uh, think about that every single day and foster my dream. Um, and uh, so I went through the network side of the business and spent about six and a half, seven years in network, built telecommunication switching sites, co-location facilities. Uh, then I went into the provisioning and, the, and uh, customer service, did a little stint in sales, uh, got into revenue assurance and the business side, contract management. And I really learned, I was lucky enough in my career to at one time create run or manage every department within a phone company. And uh, so it was within that period that I really understood the business uh, well enough to one day uh, have that opportunity. Um, and one day the opportunity did come up about four years ago. There was a company I knew and uh, they were up for sale. I got myself a financial partner and uh, we bought it. And uh, that was Blue Costa Telephone, and it's been around four years and thriving. Uh, about a year and a half ago, there was another opportunity for a much larger company called TNCI. TNCI is a small, medium, and enterprise class business uh, phone services company operating in all 50 states. That one went zero to about $60 million in annualized revenue overnight, uh, and it's just been a huge success. Um, but this Tonight, it's about you guys and how to harness uh, communications in what it is that you guys want to do. And so the entrepreneurs out there, the people who are starting businesses, the people who want to start businesses, uh, this is for you. Uh, I'm an open book. If I don't answer your question now, I'm very easy to find through LinkedIn or Google or whatever. Reach out to me, get my business card, follow up. Um, after you go through that first level where you're just trying to feed yourself and your family and you get a little bit secure in business, for me, the satisfaction is watching people succeed. To be able to walk through the building and to see people who have been with me since the beginning and that they're happy and they're loving it, and uh, for me, that's the greatest satisfaction. So for you guys as well. So with that, uh, Let's see, I saw everybody else having trouble with this as well, so there we go. Um, look familiar? Traditional office, 
There was a time where every business aspired to have as much square footage as they want, all the employees showing up every day, tons of parking. Um, you know, that was the, the nirvana of business at one time. Uh, there's a lot of pros and a lot of cons, and you can read them. The biggest one to me is that the talent pool is not always where the office is. And if you don't think about that, you aren't able to harness the best possible talent out there. You know, the key to business is to find the absolute best people that you can find and then enable them, support them, and watch them succeed, help them succeed. So you need to find a way to expand the business. And I'm going to be talking about the virtual office, and that's what it's about. You know, if somebody has the tools, then they can do their job wherever they are. And let me give you some examples. Uh, we have an office in Santa Barbara, in Stockton, in Austin, and in Boston. However, one of our best engineers that we have lives in Atlanta. When there is a project going on, he, it seems like he's working 24-7, 365. When there is trouble in the network, he's the first one logged in finding it. He's one of the sharpest, most tuned in guys that we have. If we didn't make a accommodation to let him into our company systems from wherever he was, he could never work for us. Our VP of sales, uh, she's on the road three weeks out of the month. She's away from her kids, her family, probably 12 or 13 days out of that three weeks. Um, if we didn't make a way for her to be at an airport and dial into our portal and do quoting, if she couldn't get her email or come into the database and review customer contracts uh, electronically, uh, she'd be incapable of doing that. So by empowering that, uh, you know, our company's better off and we let her work out of her house. So when she's not traveling, she gets to take the kids to school. She gets to pick them up, have an ice cream. You know, that's, you know, the great thing about the virtual office. So the office components, they haven't changed much, right? Lily Tomlin at the, okay, I'm dating myself. Uh, some of the people get it. Uh, so the components haven't changed much. What changes is the way that we interact with those components. And it's essential that we change the way that we interact with them because we want to enable that. We want to take those bright minds wherever they are around the world. You know, I was talking with somebody and, um, oh, I'm going to mess it up. I think that they have like, you know, working with a company that has 300 programmers in India and they're interfacing with the United States workforce seamlessly. You know, the only way to do that is through virtualization. So you need to figure out a way to harness that. And it's important, especially as a startup, that you think about it from the beginning. Because I've been fortunate but unfortunate to take over a company that didn't think about that, and then you have to retroactively go back and put all that in. So if you can think about it from the beginning and humor yourself for a minute and pretend that you're gonna continue to grow, and you will, and as you get bigger, you'll already have the systems and the processes in place, and everything will be so much easier. So how do you get to the virtual office? The first thing is, top picture, does that look familiar to anybody? Right. You remember the old days uh, where there was a wire for every element, there was a wire for every phone call, there was a wire for your uh, computer to get up to the internet, there was a wire for your printer. There, take everything that you thought that you knew about communications more than five years ago and just forget it. Okay, what I want you to think about for a minute is a pipe, okay? So it's a data pipe, but just think about a plumbing pipe and you have a big round pipe and once you control that data pipe coming into your office, 
coming into your home office, coming into wherever uh, you may be, in your car, in the parking lot of a client, uh, in a hotel, working late at night, wherever you are, if you're controlling that pipe, then you can control the services that go inside of that pipe. There was a time where a phone call was a electrical connection between two places. And then the whole theory of VOIP, right? Voice over internet protocol came. And what that is, is that's a simulation of a phone call between two computers. And in the, be in the middle, they're just transmitting a digital signal and on each side they're replicating what that signal is, unpacking the boxes and creating that voice. Once you have control of that pipe, you can layer in your voice, you can layer in your data connection to the internet, you can layer in a virtual private network back to your corporate uh, office or your database where you can get access to your proprietary systems you can layer in video conferencing, right? If you're working from home, there is a thing called QoS, quality of service management, that you can put on both sides because you don't want to be in your home office trying to conduct a conference call, very important conference call with clients, and your teenage boy is in his room watching something on Netflix, and your conversation goes in the, uh, on the floor, let's call it. Um, so, Remember, control that pipe. And once you have that, that's the most amount of power that there is. So connectivity is key. And the most important word in that headline is the last word, the written word. I mean, think about the generation, the, the, the kid generation that's coming into the workforce right now. They live by text, by some of them by email. You just have to teach them not to use abbreviations in text when they're writing an important email. But, you know, texting, uh, chatting, um, Facebook, uh, Twitter, you know, they're all over that. And uh, you have to find a way in your business to invite that mentality in to harness it and make it productive. And then you will be so much better off by welcoming that group into your workforce. And I'll make just an amateur prediction, but that's where it's going, right? When, uh, when I was a kid, it was all about voice. Knock it up, knock it on somebody's door, had to get back to the office to make a phone call. Now, they're standing in line at Starbucks, they're sending emails, they're uh, late at night rifling through their emails and responding, doing quotes on the, you know, on the road. Uh, I hope not, because I'm a telephone company, but voice is going away. Uh, so you need to have the connectivity and allow both the verbal and written integration in. I just took a picture of my bookkeeper's desk and I put it up there. Um, this is the wrong way to start a company, right? Uh, if you think about it, documents, contracts, uh, quotes, uh, invoices, all that documentation, it is essential to the business. And it's really simple when you're a startup. Like, I know where everything is. It's in the file cabinet and I see it when I come home. What happens when you hire your second employee or your third employee and then you get up to 20 and you get a few people that are on the road and they can't get into that file cabinet. They can't sort through it. So think about that from the beginning. There's some really cool uh, document storage ways to do it. Um, there's, you know, Microsoft has a really good one, Microsoft 365, and there's a, a SharePoint on there. You can put everything in SharePoint. Uh, Amazon has storage. 
Barracuda is a company that has uh, storage facilities. And if you even want to take it a step further, go with a company that can automatically pull your employees' computers every 15 minutes or every night and replicate their data into your corporate storage. Right? We had a vice president who his house was broken into a couple weeks ago, and they took a little bit of jewelry and they took his laptop. You know, it's bad enough losing a $1,000 laptop, but could you imagine if that was the only place that that information was stored? So we can buy him a new laptop. You go back to the last instance of his uh, download, and you put it all in there, and within 24 hours, he's back up and running as though he never lost his laptop before. So the key there <clears throat> is to have your central electronic repository, and people will be able to access that any place they are around the world. The last note, make sure it's simple. It should look just like that on their desktop where they can just click an icon and there it is. Uh, I was consulting in a very past life with a company and their archive system was so complex, so difficult, nobody used it. That was the biggest crime at all. Not only didn't they have it, didn't, not only didn't they have access to their documents, they were paying money for a system that nobody was using. So make sure it's simple. So there's different solutions for different companies and different size companies. So when you're small, you know, the urge, especially as a, I heard the term a wantapreneur earlier. So, you know, when you're the first person, it's easy to grab your smartphone and your laptop with a data card and think, I'm set, right? I have the virtual office wherever I am. Have faith in yourself that you're gonna get a little bit bigger than that. And at least for your voice product, uh, there's some pretty good services out there. Um, we have one called Telastic, there's Grasshopper, and those are a virtual uh, voice PBX, if you will. Um, or a hosted voice solution. What that is, is when somebody calls in to the system, they can dial a extension and get to you, they can leave a message. Some of them will create a, uh, a voicemail uh, packet to you and uh, email it, and you can listen to, it, to uh, you on your smartphone. Uh, we have simultaneous ringing so when somebody calls your office, you can ring your mobile phone at the same time. You can pick it up wherever you are in the world. They never know where you are. When you call back, you can call back through the app. It shows your office number. So the days of carrying two different cell phones are gone. You don't need a personal one and a business one. You could have one. So make it easy on your people. Another reason to always have it come into the central uh, corporate tree, what happens when you have your number one salesperson who's responsible for 45% of the sales in your company and they quit to go to a competitor? What's going to happen the next morning when that salesperson gets a phone call on their mobile number? Your competitors get in the business. What you want to do is have a system where the phone call comes in and then relays to their mobile number. That person quits, you go onto the web portal, redirect the call to the number two salesperson, you don't miss a beat. For your data, uh, it's a little bit simple when you're a small company, right? Probably 10 employees and below. You have data cards for everybody, they're plugging them into their laptops or their tablets, they're off and running. Remember the data storage though. Create a data sort of system and start it from the beginning. Ask everybody, please, put everything in there. It'll make a big difference later on. Medium-sized company, you may have an internal phone system. Uh, you may decide at that point to stay with a hosted voice system as well. 
and uh, it's exactly what we were just talking about with the small company, only a little bit larger. Sounds kind of self-explanatory, but you could have uh, multiple offices. You could have people working from their house. You could have people working from the field, and everybody should come in through the same uh, numbers, through the same phone system chain, and then disperse it out from there through your data pipes. Large business, uh, this will probably take you from about 50 employees up. Each one of those boxes represent different offices. Once again, uh, all of the calls come into one centralized location. You can push the numbers out. You can have different prefixes, uh, Boston at the top, Austin at the bottom. Uh, you know, just add a few more wherever your offices are. You have remote employees. The good news about that, you can have, if you have a call center, you can have load balancing where uh, the same amount of calls are coming into the different call centers, making sure that if one of them goes down or is busy or goes to lunch, they can shut it off and they'll automatically go over to the other one. Somebody's sick, you can go on the portal and redirect their phone calls to somebody else. Uh, so things are happening in real time, it doesn't stop. So that's kind of the difference between if we think about where we just came through, small, medium, and large. So don't get left behind because it's where it's going. So how do you get there? Think about it every day and every decision that you make, right? Walk towards that goal of being a virtual environment, empowering your employees to work wherever they are, um, and just do it step by step in every decision that you make, every business decision that you make in every process. <coughs> If, if you aren't there today, you probably won't be there tomorrow. But by taking a step there every day in the not too distant future, you will be there. And then your company will be much better off for it. You'll be more productive, more efficient, and definitely more profitable. Okay, thank you. <laughs>